The Kennedy classification system is the most widely used method for classifying partial edentulous arches. It is classified as follows. Class 1 is for bilateral edentulous areas, posterior to the remaining teeth. Class 2 is just like class 1 except this time, it's only unilateral edentulous areas posterior to the remaining teeth. Class 3 is unilateral edentulous area that's surrounded by teeth, both on the anterior and posterior. Class 4 refers to a single edentulous area anterior to the remaining teeth and crossing the midline. Okay, so far so good. When attempting to classify a partially edentulous arch, there are a number of rules to abide by. These rules are called the Applegate's rules. Rule number one says that the Kennedy classification should always be done after all useless teeth have been extracted. Take this arch for instance. Here we have a single edentulous area that's surrounded by teeth both on the front and the back. Thus, this would be a class three classification under normal circumstances. However, if those back molars are due for an extraction, then we must take that into account and treat them as missing teeth before we make our classification. Thus, instead of our original class three classification, we now have a unilateral edentulous space that's posterior to the rest of the teeth, which corresponds with the class two classification. Rule number two states that if the second or third molar is missing and is not to be replaced or used as abutments, then they will not be considered in the classification. In this arch, our third molars are missing and if we don't have any plans to replace them with something like an implant, then we're going to disregard it altogether from the Kennedy classification and treat it as missing teeth. Thus, this is a single unilateral edentulous space posterior to the remaining teeth, aka class two classification. On the other hand, if our third molars are present and they are stable enough to be used as abutments, we will consider them as part of our Kennedy classification and treat them as teeth. In this case, we have an edentulous area with teeth both in the front and the back that can be used for as support. And thus, this will be a class three classification. If our second molar is missing and we have no plan to replace it in the future, we're going to ignore it and treat it as a missing tooth. So this will be once again, a class two classification. Rule number three says that the most posterior edentulous area always determines the classification and any other edentulous areas are considered as modification spaces. Take this arch for example. There are two edentulous areas here. Abiding by this rule, the most posterior edentulous area in this case, which is on the second quadrant, will determine our Kennedy classification, which in this case is class two. And the other edentulous area will become a modification space. Since there's only one other edentulous area, we will call it mod one. And hence, the full classification for this arch will be class two, mod one. In this example, again, we have two edentulous spaces, but we'll take one that's more posterior and classify it according to that. So this one is class three, mod one. Here we have a bilateral posterior edentulous space, which will make this a class one, mod two. The last rule states that the class four classifications cannot have any mod spaces. It will become clear as to why if we run through an example. Take this arch for instance, where we have this single edentulous space that's crossing the midline and another edentulous space at the back. It may be tempting to call this a class four with a modification space of one. The reason why this can't be is if we refer back to rule number three, it stated that the classification is dictated always by the posterior edentulous areas, which means that this arch should instead be called class three with a modification space of one. Same situation here. We have two edentulous spaces at the back, so there's no way that this can be a class four classification. And since the posterior space in quad one is most posterior than the others, this arch should be classified as class two Mod two. That's everything you need to know. Try testing your skill with these example dental arches using everything that we went over in this video.
Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give a thumbs up and subscribe for more informative dental videos in the future. Also feel free to follow us on social media to get our latest updates and videos.